Hi there, it's uh, Ricky from Marshall Times here once again. Uh, I'm delighted to welcome Manchester-based band Pissed. Now, this is actually the second take of this interview. Um, let's just say that they lived up to the band name in the first attempt. So, uh -huh. um, Pissed play sludge metal with maybe touches of black metal and a wee bit of hardcore punk in there, maybe uh, in the vein of Latter-day Dark Throne as well. So they should appeal to uh, a, a large majority of fans. So joining me, uh, it was meant to be John, the guitarist, but uh, Dave, the vocalist, got a wee bit nosy, so he wanted to come and join in as well. So um, how are you guys doing? How have you been since the lockdown and everything? Uh, yeah, all right. Just keeping busy, uh, writing, seeing as we can't gig it at the moment. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, still at it. So what about your work then? Is everything all right with your work and your friends and family and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've both been working from home the whole time. I saw her on. Yeah, we've not stopped. Um, yeah, and thankfully everything's been all right with friends and family. Ah, good. Delighted to hear it. Delighted to hear it. But listen, we're not here to talk about the lockdown and COVID and all that nonsense. So um, it's been a wee while since uh, you released Tales. That was like 2019. So have you, been, you, you guys been using this time constructively and written more songs then? Yeah, we've, um, we've got a new album that's... Uh, pretty much written uh, and we're due to go to Fall Studio in May uh, to record that. We we brought another guitarist in. Um, yeah, we've just been um, staying busy, uh, practicing and writing a new record. That's, yeah. yeah. So how have you been uh, communicating your ideas to each other? Uh, we didn't actually practice for about six months. Um, we share like a WhatsApp group, so we just video riffs and send them over that way. Yeah. Um, but then eventually we got back in the room and we were in there at least once a week now. Yeah. So Dave, is John the type of guy that sends you a riff at four o'clock in the morning saying, this is a belter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, riffs get sent uh, at fucking whatever time. Yeah, it, um, it just depends, you know. Um, I mean, if you sat drinking and stuff like that, messing about, and you get a rip come in your head. I mean, I'm sure I posted some at stupid o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, that's the way, that's the way. So for those that are new to the band, then you say that you've pretty much got an album written. Um, how would you say it compares to your early material? And do you think that you found the sound that you've been looking for with this new material? It's just a progression. It's more of everything between us. We listen to pretty much everything we can get our hands on. Um, and we just try and put as much of that into the music as possible to make us a bit different to everyone else. Really. I think um, I think the next the next record's going to be complete to like our early releases. And it, it'll be a bit different to Hales and like what John was just saying with the progression and shit. But, I, I mean, I think we're getting towards the kind of sound that we kind of want, but I, I, I personally don't think we're there yet, but you want to keep progressing or it just gets fucking stale, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you guys going to have like a seven track album like Kale's, like the song lasting more than five minutes in length again, or can you guys not write a song like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, guitar solo ending in three minutes? <laughs> I think there's um, on the I think there's eight tracks that we we're gonna put on the next record. There is uh, there is some long ass ones again and uh, some more snappier in your face kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just happens naturally to write a song that long when you're trying to add dynamics. In I don't I don't think we purposely try to write to any particular kind of style or length of song or anything like that. That's, I don't really think that's in our mindset when we're writing. It's it's just kind of whatever the fuck happens. <laughs> yeah. Are we all right staring it? Because <laughs> the two videos that you have, there's quite a big difference in the sound. Like Detached, that was released like five years ago. There's a huge difference to the... Um, Main Rotter that was released a couple of years ago. Are we going to see that kind of leap again? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. No, so. Yeah. And I think, obviously, having another um, guitarist on board gives us a bit more freedom to experiment with other shit. Right? 
yeah, yeah. So where is it you said that you were going to record the album? A full studio in Wales with Chris Fielding from Conan. Uh, we've recorded everything with him so far. I mean, he's almost like another member of the band. I can't imagine recording with someone else. So do you go into the studio and you think that you've got all your songs absolutely perfect and then he adds his top and his worth in? Does he bring his own ideas into the table as well, yeah? 100%, yeah. yeah. And uh, and we like that, you know, because it's probably something we haven't even thought of, like, and, you know, just having another set of ears on it and then offering, though, that guidance and stuff, he, yeah. He did that from our first release, uh, gave us ideas straight away. Yeah. And it really adds to the song. So. And it's comfortable working with him. You, I don't, I feel relaxed and that's kind of what you need to a degree, isn't it? So you feel relaxed, but at the same time, he's pushing you and pushing you and your vocals. Oh, yeah, <laughs> massively. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm a shit vocalist. He tells me, tells me what to do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's great that you've got somebody of the experience of a band like Conan, you know. So um, you couldn't see you see yourself working with anybody else. No, uh, not not recording wise. Well, Chris is available now. It's just uh, we like that environment, and um, it's really cool down at Fall. Yeah. It's you completely okay. completely out of the way of yeah. everything, like, and it's. Uh, yeah, it's a nice environment. So how long are you going to be in the studio for? It's six days. Uh, we go on the 17th and spend the whole week there. We live there whilst we do it. Yeah. Ah, cool, man. Looking forward to hearing it. So it's certainly like when it's uh, recorded and stuff, uh, send it to ourselves at Moshville, uh, Moshville Times, and we'll certainly do a bit to promote it as well. I'm also involved on like, podcasts. Um, um, involved in a couple of radio stations as well. Like I've got a mate that DJs for a UK one as well as a US one. So um, certainly when you've got any tracks that you're willing to put out there, um, send us it and we'll promote the show. Yeah, we'll do, man. I think we're going to, um, obviously when it's done and shit, we're going to drop a few singles and that before yeah. um, it's it's actually released. So we'll send you some shit over. Yeah, all right. That's, that's the plan, that's the plan. So do you also have a plan to do a, a video to coincide with the releases or is COVID put Yeah, we, we, we don't know what we're going to do, but we will do, we'll probably do um, one video and like then a lyric video or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But yeah, we'll definitely do, definitely do a video. Yeah, cool. I'm not, not sure of what. <laughs> <laughs> probably just... Uh... We're talking about filming some of the recording process and maybe blending that into a music video if it's good enough, but yeah. we'll have to see. Uh, there's quite a bit of that in the, was it Mind Daughter? That you had a lot of uh, backstage antics. Yeah, 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 that was when we were on tour with Orange Goblin. Uh, we just got a guy called Ash Collins to come out for a few okay. days and record it all, and it, it, I'm really happy with how that video turned out. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. It's funny though, every single show of you guys, you always had a, a glass in your hand or something like that, you know, well, I suppose it could have been worse, it could have been something else you kept on carrying in your hand, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it was a pain. So Dave, have you been the vocalist of the band then? Do you take care of all the lyrics or do do the band um, you as well? On, on the previous releases, I'd say that I wrote the bulk of them, but now me and uh, Mike, our bassist, who uh, also sings, uh, we've been we've been sitting down and writing a lot together, and uh, it's, it's been going pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't stress enough on the live environment having two vocalists um, on a live environment is just it just turns it on for me. And um, I think it's uh, so much diversity to a song, and that, again, that's clearly shown in like Main Rotter. Um, so it's good. So he also contributes like maybe ten percent of lyrics. Yeah. What well, What would you say? Uh, yeah, I'd, say I'd say he's a. Uh, I'd say on this release, he's he's done a he's done a fair fair whack. Yeah. So what would you say the lyrical themes are for this record then? Uh, <laughs> this one's pretty miserable. Uh, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, yeah, just dealing with bullshit, uh, mad hatred for 
a high percentage of mankind. Um, yeah, not like they're not about fucking blue skies and daffodils or anything like that. Like. So it's fair to say there's no ballads in this album then? Uh, nah. No. <laughs> None of uh, John's glam metal influences are going to come into play then, no? <laughs> no, no. I, I tried that uh, on the last album, but then I'm not. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Um, so how are songs uh, constructed in the, studio, in the studio? Are the main songwriters to the songs? Or is it pissed a band where all members contribute? Um, in the beginning, it was just me uh, with Riffology and most of Rhythm and Booze. And as time went on, we started writing together. Yeah. Uh, on this album, absolutely everyone's had a say on each song, so it's not just me anymore. So, do you feel a lot less stress and pressure to to bring out and uh, bring the material in then? Uh, I never felt pressured anyway. To be honest, uh, yeah. I just enjoy the writing process anyway. Yeah. Um, but it's there's less pressure on me to be consistent with ideas because there's a lot more to it now. Yeah. Um, I definitely prefer it with another guitarist because I was holding back a bit before with harmonies and stuff and now no, I can just do whatever I want. Again, it worries me, like, uh, I don't think you do a lot of solos anyway, but again, it worries me in the life front when there's only one guitarist. Like, when it goes on to, like, solos, it can sound, the room can sound empty at that time, you know? So um, that leads me on to my next question then, because Pissed had always been, like, a four-piece band, uh, but in October of last year, you brought Jack into the band. So what were the main reasons for bringing in Jack, and how has he helped to influence the sound of the new album? I've thought about it for a while, um, but because we're so, like, we're four very, I don't know how to say it, like, characters pretty much um but it was just he was in the right place at the right time he was here um we were we were around at my house having a few beers and that and um jack had uh jack was round and him and um uh, him and john just started having a mess about on uh some of the guitars we've got here and uh it was just it just worked and we'd not we'd not gone looking for another guitarist. That wasn't our plan. We weren't on the search or anything or auditioning people or any of that shit. Um he, he was just here and we were just like, fucking hell, it sounds sounds killer this. So And he's learned uh he's learned all the tales just over a week or so. So we were like get him get him in the practice room. Uh but obviously it was tricky and that with COVID. Um <laughs> But then, uh, yeah, we just got in the room and it it worked. He's he's got a tune that he's written that's going to be on the uh, new record. Yeah. So, yeah, it, just right place, right time. But like I said, we weren't weren't looking for a new guitarist. It was just uh, one of those things. So, John, were you looking to progress the music in the direction that it's gone, or has um, has Jack? brought the new sound in or it just helped you along the way to get that new sound? Uh, it feels to me more like Jack's had to learn our sound and how we play and how we write songs. And he's fit, he's fit right in. The song that he's written on the album sounds like this. Yeah. So it just works really well. Yeah. That's excellent. That's excellent. Thanks very much for that, guys. So um, as I was saying, you released your second album, Hales, in 2019. So like every other band releasing music at this time, it must be pissing off that you didn't get much of a chance to promote it in the live environment. So what touring commitments did you have planned that got shelved in 2020? We, the first gig that got cancelled was Hammerfest. Uh, that was a main stage slot as well. Oh. Um, then we had a tour with Wolf Bastard in April, a headline tour. That got cancelled. Uh, Incineration Festival in London, that got cancelled, but we're on next year's lineup. Yeah. Uh, we were going to look into going to Europe in October, but obviously yeah. that didn't happen either. Uh, yeah, it was going to be a really good year for us, like Bloodstock as well, which we're still playing, but yeah, it was a bit of a kick in the dick to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> it appears to be like uh, the, the plans that you had for 2020 you copy and 2021 paste, but hopefully later on in the year you'll be able to like uh, fulfill those dreams. 
So see the tour with Wolf Bastard, is it is it just been rescheduled or has it been shelved at the moment? Yeah. Uh, um, well, I mean, hopefully we'll get to do some uh, shows with Wolf Bastard because they're our mates uh, and we're, we're fans of theirs. Um, but no, nah, it's, it's just been shelved, to be honest with you. It's only uh, the ones like John was saying, Incineration, uh, Bloodstock, Hammerfest, Hammerfest that, that we'll end up playing when they come about. But we'll just sort other tours out when we can, because I uh, don't know how long this bollocks is going to yeah. go on for, to be honest. I've been really book a tour, spend hours booking a tour, and then for it not to happen, just to be pissed off again. So. Yeah, yeah. Um... It also leads to the question then, because you didn't have that much time to promote heels, how are you going to? Because it deserves to be to be like listened and still to be pushed, but you've got all this new material. So how are you going to split your set to? It's not really. We'll some... just we'll just play a few off heels. We're not to be honest with you. We're not even that asked like mm. now because we've just been we just wrote a new record and we're kind of feeling these songs at the moment, yeah. but. I'll be sick of these songs in fucking by the time we can probably play them live and we'll have started writing more. <laughs> Just the way it <laughs> seems I'm, to go. I think possibly, obviously, prefer the newer tunes and the way it's going. Yeah. That it's kind of made us a, lot, a bit less asked about Hales. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're more excited about playing the new stuff now. So, looking back on it then, would you change anything about Hales? Or. Nah. Would- no, I think we did everything right with that record, to be honest. Yeah. I, don't, uh, I don't reflect on it that much, to be honest, and think it would, that's what we were writing in that moment and stuff. And yeah, it sounded, sounded pretty cool. It was a really big step up from the album before as well. And I was quite happy with it. And I think we got a lot more fans because of that. We can do better, though. Like, and that's what we always want to do, just keep on progressing and making it the best thing that we can we can possibly do. Yeah. I'm scared to ask you guys what you think of Riffology now, <laughs> after what you just said about To be honest with you, right, we fucking slated that record to shit, like, and then it was its... Um, it, seventh year anniversary. Yeah, it's seventh year anniversary, and we were all just at home on our own or whatever, and, uh, like, each of us put it on, I think, and we were like, Fucking hell, actually, it's not that bad. Like, <laughs> we've been, uh, I think we've been overly critical on that. Like, uh, but without, you know, we've not sat down and listened to it to critique it or whatever. We're just in our minds, it was like, oh, that was pretty shit. But yeah, when it, it's when we just finished, since we that, we're obviously a lot better at what we do now, and yeah. the songwriting's in another level. Yeah. Um, that's probably why we thought it was shit, but it's it's all right. It's kind of like demos, you know, because we did them so. I wrote that before. Riffology, yeah, yeah, we'd had one one practice together before we recorded Riffology, so it was like pretty much practicing in the fucking studio recording it. So you know, they they like that and uh, rhythm and booze, kind of in my eyes, like demos, yeah. I suppose. And Hales, Hales was like, like the first proper album, in my opinion, anyway. Oh, Celtic have got a penalty, or will that die? Oh, don't say this to me. Don't say this to me. <laughs> no, it would die. But it's uh, Celt- Celtic are one up, though. You are kidding. Anyway. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> got it on in the background. Definitely not talking about that now. Right, uh... <laughs> So is there any, you must have been like, you're still proud as, uh, as fuck like seven years ago when you released it, but it's good to see that you're um, you're moving on and I'm excited to hear the new things, but is there anything that you've done differently between Hales and the way that you're going to record this album? Like the setup or anything like that? I think the preparation for this one's been better. Like we've, do, we've been demoing some of the songs, which we've, uh, we've not done before, so... Just um, recording shit down at our practice room, and yeah. uh, that that's been cool to kind of reflect on it um, before we go into the studio, so that we can make any changes and shit, and just making sure that everyone's 
got the part spot on, you know, because there's two guitars now. It's not just John and Mike on bass, like. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Thanks for that. So um, I haven't known you guys for some time on social media then. Things seem to be very settled on the band members front. So how would you say you keep it all together? Like, for example, when negotiating what goes out and uh, stays in a song? Um, we all seem to agree with each other quite a lot, really, don't for we? The most, for the most part. So we'll try it, and turns out it's it, it works most of the time. So we don't often argue, or, apart from when I just want to be silly and put, like I said, a bit of a glam metal outro. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think I was behind that. I think this. you were. Yeah. <laughs> Well, only you just stop playing drums. Yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying is uh, there's no fisticuffs in the studio and there's no blood in the walls or anything like that then? Nah, no. like just like John said, we are we're pretty we're pretty chill to be honest with you. And we're we're a good set of mates, you know. It's not just a band, we're actually mates, you know, we hang out and stuff like that. So yeah. We, we get on, so it's, it's pretty easy, man. Ah, good stuff, good stuff. So you're signed to APF Records then, so how's the relationship uh, relationship been with them, and do you see your relationship growing? Uh, it's it's spot on, mate. Uh, Field, is, Field is one of our mates, and Andrew Field, he runs uh, APF. And he was that one I first did. Yeah, he's, he's, done, he's done loads for us, man. We can't, we can't thank him enough, you know. He's, he's excellent, like, uh, and what APF's doing is is cool as fuck, man. Like, there's a, uh, it's quality for an un- underground like label. Like some of the bands he's got on there are killer as well. Like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's good to see that he's uh, opening doors for you and um, not trying to take the mic out of you or anything like that. You know, so hopefully- no, no, man. He's he's well, he's amazing. Aye. Uh, so hopefully. Uh, yeah, we'll get the band. In fact, that's a question I wanted to ask. Because of like the lockdown and things like that, has um, has it also made you look at the more business side of the band, like keeping your name out there and marketing and stuff like that? Because you can't do any shows or anything like that, has it made you look at the, the, the business side of the band more? Um, all we've really done is put a few t-shirts out. Yeah. <laughs> And maybe post some stupid videos on Instagram. We are we are fucking useless at doing anything like that, like we just marketing or whatever like that. We we just like getting in the room, and writing music together, and then playing shows when we can, having a few beers. You know, that's that's what it's about for us. Yeah, we try not to expect too much from anything. Yeah, yeah, man. We're just having fun. Yeah. So you're not going to get serious and look for like a PR company or a music management company to. Act? I mean, if we, if something came along and it were right, then yeah, fantastic. Um, and but APF sort of the PR. Yeah, they do that round the release of the record, and then we just got to pull our own weight really uh, yeah. when it comes to shows. I mean, John will like uh, John will. But tours and stuff like that because he's uh he's got decent contacts and shit so we just kind of do it that way it's, it's diy to be honest with you yeah apf like releases our stuff and do a great job with that and but we we self promote yeah 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 cool cool thanks for that guys i've only got a few questions left so i see you guys are playing badger fest in october this year so you're looking forward to playing that gig yeah, it's looking like it'll be our first local show back since the whole pandemic. Yeah. Um, and obviously we want to show off the new tunes and the new lineup. Uh, yeah, and I like the venue as well, the Bread Show. Yeah, yeah it's cool. Never, Killer venue. never played a bad, bad gig now. What's the size of the venue? Like, it'd take a good few hundred? I think it's about 300 to 400. Yeah, it's, it's, de- it's decent. Yeah. Yeah. Nice big stage. Yeah, not a bad layout to it. On no stairs. I've been trying to come down for the last couple of years, but I've actually got a ticket for this festival. Um, so I'll be down there. And I, I, I can probably guess where I'll find you two in the venue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, more, more than that. 
<laughs> that's where I'll be standing. That's where I'll be standing as well. So, um, is there any other bands in the build that you'll be keeping an eye on as well? Like uh, you'll be watching from the side. Uh, I'm actually playing on another band called Red Eye Revival. Uh, there on the Sunday. Yeah. Um, Fatal Juice. Fatal yeah. Juice, are on it now. Uh, Chubby Thunderous, Bad Cush yeah. Masters. There, definitely one. Speed, speed on. Yeah, Raging Speed on. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's pretty it's stacked. Pretty stacked. Yeah. Yeah. Should be, should be good. It's good to see the Speed Horn guys back. So, uh, we're looking forward to seeing them. But. Um, Badger Fest itself has been building up quite a reputation for itself. So how did you get to know John? And um, how did you get uh, yourselves onto the bill? Did he come and see uh, you and approach you? I've, I've known him uh, for quite a few years now, just knocking about at gigs and saying hello. And he follows us on social media and he just asked if we were up for it. And yeah, it's a good lineup, so why not? Yeah, so you don't need to be asked, please. No, we, we rarely ask to play shows to be fair. Yeah, we just unless we're uh, fucking guitar. Yeah, or unless it's like a band that we really like and we want to support them. Yeah, like fangirl enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good stuff, good stuff. But listen, I'm going to show my age here a wee bit, but um, before the internet, magazines and fanzines were the places to find out about new bands and trends, but now publications have been replaced with thousands of websites catering for all genres. So do you think that some of the passion has been lost or do you think that the internet has been a good thing for music and a good thing for this, for example? I think the I think the underground in terms of um, like people's interest in the zines and stuff and, and what's going on. Uh, I'd, I mean, I love delving into the underground to just find music, like, and then we we tend to share it between each other and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think the... The internet's been good in the sense that you can pretty much get whatever the fuck you want, like music-wise, you know. Uh, but I'd, I'll still always buy physical, like, records and stuff like that, yeah. 100, 100%. And, yeah, he's he's just turned up around at nine today with a Fumi Mouth record, so we just spun that before we've done the interview. So we're always, like, showing new music to each other and stuff like that and within the band you know our whatsapp group everything's getting shared to shape what we're listening to so i i i think the internet's been good in it's just made it easier and the whole process really. yeah i think it's been good in that sense but then I it's been a nightmare, nightmare in other sense. i loved it back in the day when um you would send like a couple of pound away and then a couple of days later you get an envelope with a cassette and you open up the envelope and stickers will fall out and all the rest of it and you get a letter from the band, you know. I love that type of thing, whereas now you go on a streaming website and you listen for 10 seconds, nah, that's crap, and move on to the next band because there's like millions of other bands out there um, doing stuff now. I mean, you, re you can record an album in your bedroom now, you know, so... Sometimes I think the internet is uh, too dismissive of bands, you know, you're not, because you've spent that couple of pounds on the demo tape, you give it a, a listen and you listen and a listen and I go, nah, but at least you give the band a chance, but now you, you listen to 10 seconds and I'll pish, next band. Um, it has, it's a double-edged sword, I think, double-edged sword. I think, I think it's good though in the sense that, because back in the day, like I used to go, before, before we had the internet, nah, I'd go to like, the record store and go to like the extreme like section and then i just pick something on the front cover and like some of the time i'd get something absolutely killer but then other times i've just got some absolute fucking garbage like so at least now i can kind of check it out and then if i love it i'm gonna buy it yeah. Yeah. like rather than just stream yeah. it for now we try and give a uh, oh shit uh we try and um Try and give bands money and support and stuff like that. Well, that's that's key. Yeah, usually if I find something I really like it, I'm gonna buy it on vinyl and yeah. and probably buy a t-shirt and shit as well. Uh. No, it must be quite um, funny for you guys as well. You you might have fans from like Poland and the Far East and stuff like that in Brazil, yeah, um, but that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the internet. So. Um, yeah, that's, you know, 
it gets the exposure is good and stuff with it. Fine. So yeah, it's 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 probably a good thing. <laughs> I, would, I would say. Cool. Thanks for that. Thanks very much. Right, guys. Um, we're pretty much on to the last question then. So, John, uh, this is where I pretty uh, get the guys to talk about their instruments that they're playing on the record. So, what are you going to use to record the new album and what's your guitar setup? Uh, I use Jackson guitars. I've actually got a new one on the way, uh, which will hopefully be here before then. Um, I use, I'm endorsed by Blackstar as well, the amps. Uh, so, I'll be using that with a couple of others in the studio have just to thicken it up a bit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Jackson, Jackson guitars and black star amps mostly. You always a sex string? Yeah. Uh, we tune down to drop C. Um I don't I don't want to use a seven string ever in my life. Really. No. It's I don't think, I don't think you're got you're a progressive metal band or anything like that. Well so. oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so do you use any pedals? Yeah, I've got quite a complex setup, really. Um, I use this Boss multi-switch that changes the channel on my amp and what effects are being run at, uh, just with one hit, so I'm not tap dancing. <laughs> um, we use a, a drop pedal that tunes your guitar even lower without even physically doing it, and a Max on overdrive, which is probably the secret weapon. Wow, so how many guitars do you have? Um, six, a seventh on the way. That's bases included. So that's one for every day of the week then? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> need another one. Good stuff, good stuff. Dave, what about yourself then? Do you, um, as a vocalist, do you have like a, a particular microphone that you use? Have you used a, a lot of different microphones before you settled on the one that you're using just now? Or you're not really like that fussy? No, I'm not that fussy. I had a funny idea say that. <laughs> yeah, um, just um, the SM58. Yeah, SM58, sure SM58. Uh, yeah, that's I've had that for a few years. Uh, beaten up. To it the took court, you a few but, years. Yeah, man. <laughs> Like it took me years to actually even buy a microphone, man, because I was I was like, I'll fucking use whatever. Like I'm I'm not fussy, you know, I'm not very precious about this kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah. The technical stuff. So now listen guys, um that's the end of the interview. Thanks very much for that. So where will we find uh, pissed on social media then? Um we're gonna try and start using it now because Gigs are coming back. We've we've been off it for the past year. Um, but uh, pissed band, uh, facebook.com forward slash pissed band. Uh, Instagram's pissed underscore sixty eight. We use that Instagram more than Facebook at the moment. Yeah. Um, I've literally only just signed back onto Facebook about two days ago, and I've been off it for about a year. Yeah. Still have messages so I can speak to people, but. Uh, yeah, Facebook and Instagram, we'll try and use it a bit more. Instagram's pretty good recently because we've been uh, posting like some of the demoing process. Yeah. So what people want to hear what, what's coming, that's probably the best place to do it. Well, I'll certainly uh, be keeping an eye on you guys. And like I said, when you've got new stuff ready, you know where to send it. You've got my email address and my contact details, so you know where to send it. Yeah. But um, as I said before, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, speaking to you. Second time lucky. Uh, yeah. but it's been a pleasure talking to you guys. So uh, look forward to seeing you at Badger Fest, if, if not before. Have you ever uh, played in Scotland, actually? Yeah, yeah we've played um, Edinburgh and Glasgow. Every tour we, we try and do at least one Scottish day. Yeah. Edinburgh we, and Glasgow. We love it. We, we love Scotland. <laughs> so have you played like uh, Ivory Blacks in Glasgow? Oh, we so played... The first time we played, it was... Audio. That, no, it was um, that place that's like a maze. Banshee Labyrinth. Oh, oh yeah. That's Edinburgh. That was Edinburgh, wasn't it? Yeah. Edinburgh. Um, Audio in Glasgow. Audio's, audio's a brilliant venue. It doesn't look much on the outside, but it's got absolutely brilliant. It, yeah, it's, it's cool. And there's, there was no stairs, was there? It's, it's, yeah, yeah, decent load in that. <laughs> <laughs> And the good thing is you're allowed to stage dive in there as well, you know, so it uh, brings back the old days. You're not standing at a gig with your microphone above your head. I can't stand. 
But anyway, thanks very much for that, guys, and uh, look forward to hearing the new stuff. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, oh, man. Nice one. Cheers, man.